What's going on everybody and welcome to the part 1 of AWS Lambda tutorial with Python. So in this tutorial we are going to talk about the overall structure of the AWS Lambda with short explanation. So let's get started with the uh, quick definition of AWS Lambda. So uh, AWS Lambda is the computational service which scales automatically uh, without the headache of managing backend servers. So uh, as you can see I have defined one function that is get started. Don't worry uh, I, will, I will show you how to create the uh, lambda function in the next part of this tutorial series. So for now let's start with ARN. So ARN is the Amazon resource name. So ARN stays unique throughout the AWS. So ARN is used to uniquely identify any resources uh, within the AWS. So this uh, get started is the name of the function given while creating the lambda function. You can uh, list out the uh, or switch to the alias or version uh, from the qualifiers. As you can see uh, we have the latest. You can create a, a new version uh, via uh, from action that is pub publish new version. And you can also create an alias from here. Then the third option is pretty self explanatory for deleting a function. The fourth is export function. So the export function allows you to download the configuration file of the uh, AWS Lambda. And the, uh, you can also download a deployment package that is the code base uh, that is uploaded or uh, wrote inline into this Lambda function. You can uh, create the or configure the test events from here. So events are the payloads uh, that is passed into the lambda function in the form of JSON. So now, now let's move ahead in the configuration tab. So under the designer you can see add triggers. So these are the various triggers uh, you can uh, configure on this lambda function. So I will give an example of the S3 bucket. Now you want to perform some uh, computation uh, on the file that is in the S3 bucket uh, added every month. So let's say uh, every month a new file is added into the S3 bucket and you need to perform some computation on that new file. So you can set and trigger so whenever the new file will be added into the S3 bucket so this lambda will get triggered and the computation will be performed on that uh, new data. Let's move on. So whichever triggers you, you select here will be added here in, 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 this, in this list. Let's move to the view permissions. So the view permissions, uh, in view permission you can see the function policy and execution roles. So the function policy defines which AWS resources are allowed to invoke this lambda function. And the execution role uh, defines which AWS resources to which this lambda function has access to. Okay, so as you can see for now we have, uh, full, ac we have full access to the Amazon S3 bucket, right? So you can also see these permissions here that is uh, Amazon S3 is listed here. So as you can see this defines the resource the functions role has access to will be shown here. So if we add uh, some more services then another services will be followed by Amazon S3 and below. So this get started is our uh, lambda function. So let's move on to the function code uh, window. So you can uh, write a code or upload a code via by three types so you can edit code inline so you can uh, write a code uh, itself uh, here only you can define a directory or new files and write a code here and execute it or you can upload a zip file means you can write a code locally and package uh, bundle into a package of zip file and upload it here so the limitation of this uh, zip file is that it should not exceed more than 10 MB so if it is exceeding more than 10 MB then uh, you are required to uh, you are required to use the third option that is upload a file from Amazon S3. So you can uh, you, sh you you have to upload a file on Amazon Amazon S3 bucket and you will get an URL. All you need to uh, copy and paste that URL here. So let's keep it uh, edit code in line for now. Let's move on to runtime. So the runtime uh, we have selected is Python 3.6 as this tutorial series is based on Python, and these are the various uh, runtime that is supported by AWS Lambda. Let's move on to handler. So the handler defines two things. That is the uh, name of the main file and the name of the main function. 
so the name of the main file is lambda underscore function so that is, here you can see that is uh, lambda underscore function dot py and it is uh, followed by lambda underscore handler so lambda underscore handler is the main function that will be executed so if you if you want to rename these two things so let's say you want to uh, uh, replace lambda underscore function with main then you you are required to rename this lambda underscore function dot py to main dot py and if you are uh, renaming this lambda underscore handler to let's say main then you are required to replace this uh, lambda underscore handler with main if these two things won't match then uh, uh, definitely you are uh, going to get an error so let's move on with in the with the environment variables so the uh, you can pass the environment variables here like uh, any credential or the name of the s3 bucket from where you want to download a file programmatically or database credentials so for example let's say i'm passing database host here uh, and the value of it and uh, so you can access the database underscore host value uh, in this lambda function programmatically you can also configure this uh, environment variables via encryption configuration here now let's move so let's move on to tags so tags will uh, with the help of tags you can easily track the uh, frequency and cost of each each function invocation so the uh, key advantage of, of using tags are uh, grouping and filtering and the second one is uh, uh, cost allocation so basically uh, it will it will group the similar resources and you can uh, with the and you can do that with the help of grouping so uh, that was tags so let's move on to the uh, execution role so uh, the execution role defines the permissions uh, to which uh, you want uh, access to so let's say for now uh, in this uh, lambda underscore role i have uh, given permission of the s3 bucket so as you can see here uh, we have a permission to amazon s3 so this lambda function can uh, access the resources on the uh, s3 s3 buckets so uh, this execution role is execution role is defined by the IAM role. So I will show you later in the later part of the series that how to create an IAM role. So now let's move on to the basic setting. So you can uh, add the uh, description of this lambda function here in this description tag. So let's say uh, get started. So you can uh, let's move on to memory now. So you can uh, configure the memory. Uh, Minimum you can configure 128 MB and maximum you can configure 3008 MB. So this is the limitation you can't uh, configure or exit uh, 3008 uh, MB of the RAM size. Right. So uh, below is the timeout. So by default uh, it execute you know, for 3 seconds. I mean the, this lambda function will execute for 3 seconds and you can max configure it maximum to 5 minutes. So it, it won't exceed uh, above five minutes. So if the computation time or processing time uh, is is taking more than five minutes, then uh, you are going to face a failure here. But again, you can tweak around uh, to overcome this five minutes uh, uh, execution. I will show you later how. Now uh, let's move on to the network. So VPC. So VPC is the virtual private cloud. So typically. Uh, you create the resources like uh, RDS instances or the Redshift data warehouse within the virtual private cloud so that the external uh, internet uh, won't, won't be able to access those resources, right? And by default, this Lambda function uh, uh, also, by default, this Lambda function is also unable to uh, access the resources that is placed into the uh, VPC. So to access uh, those resources within the VPC, uh, you need to configure uh, this uh, VPC. So once you configure, then you will be able to access the RDS instance that is placed into the uh, virtual private cloud. So now let's move on to debugging and error handling. So uh, this is the DLQ resource. The DLQ is the uh, dead letter Q. So we use uh, DLQ for forwarding payloads uh, that is uh, failed to process by this lambda. So let's say if, uh, we, we have uh, passed some payload and the lambda failed to process that payload. So we so that that failed payload we can uh, send it via uh, sns or sqs for further debugging purpose and and we can uh, know that uh, we can find out that why that payload was not processed right so debugging and error handling 
can be used for that analysis purpose or debugging purpose now let's move on to concurrency so by default uh, uh, we have the unreserved account concurrency of 1000 or you can also uh, reserve a concurrency for for this lambda function by two or something so what is concurrency concurrency is the number of uh, execution number of lambda execution that is taking at a time okay so so it can uh, execute uh, 1000 uh, lambda function at a time so if you, if you reserve the uh, concurrency for this lambda function then the another lambda function which are unreserved will will use this 998 uh, uh, concurrency account so uh, maximum uh, you can reserve concurrency is 900 for the uh, for the overall lambda function you cannot exceed uh, above 900 because it, it keeps a hundred uh, as unreserved account concurrency for those lambdas uh, to whom we have not uh, reserved concurrency for so that was concurrency now uh, let's move on, the, on to the auditing and compliance so the auditing and compliance can be configured via cloud trail so it generally uh, uh, give us the idea about that uh, when lambda function when this lambda function was uh, executed uh, or um, by which user it has been executed uh, what are the uh, events that had that has been passed so uh, auditing and compliance uh, is used for that so you can get the overall uh, log of the invocation of this uh, lambda function so uh, this was the quick uh, stru overall structure of the aws uh, lambda so to uh, to know more uh, i have created one uh, cheat sheet uh, that you can find at github.com that is an src cd aws lambda cheat sheet uh, I will paste this uh, URL in the description. So here you can uh, find the uh, probably all the things regarding AWS Lambda. I am keeping this updated uh, as soon as the, any new service or any new thing is getting added uh, or updated into the AWS Lambda. So here you can see uh, I have defined uh, various various tweaks here. So how to exit five minutes uh, time execution in this Lambda. So you can just uh, go through this uh, article and 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 tweak around it so guys uh, this was the uh, quick overview of the uh, aws lambda structure if you have any concern comment then please leave them below until see you next time